In the old American rule, the most victimized communities were blacks and Jews. Both have been tortured, oppressed, imprisoned, and restricted to work and build wealth. The difference is, when Jews began to have some right after the civil right movement, their song, poems, films, and drama became forward-looking. They strategized on global conquest and creating economic power. In contrast, the blacks often dwell on historical grievances, lamenting, yesterday, we were beaten, killed, and so on. The new current generation lives in the past, but the Jews made their people think about the future. In a span of less than 50 years, Jews accumulate considerable wealth and power, while blacks, they got their freedom. They remain to be poor. They can sing, but cannot get out of poverty. Can you wrap your head around this absurdity? What twisted sense of moral superiority does this guy think he possesses, blaming African Americans for their own predicaments? It's like he's regurgitating the same racist garbage we've heard before, reminiscent of the welfare queen nonsense. Shockingly, Abby, who were a minister and senior official in the Oromo Democratic Party in Ethiopia, put his wife and kids into low-income housing in Denver, milking US taxpayer money. And as if that's not enough, he's exposed for parading around with a fake doctorate degree when he had every opportunity for a legitimate education. It's enraging how he dares to point fingers at African Americans who have historically been denied the basic right to education. My wife and her three children were living in Section 8 housing in Denver. What we learned while we were there, which was just a powerful story, was that while he was being elected prime minister, his wife and daughters were in exile here in Denver, and he simply wanted to thank us. In the old American rule, the most victimized communities were blacks and Jews. Both have been tortured, oppressed, imprisoned, and restricted to work and build wealth. The assertion that Jews and African Americans shared the same experience in America is not only factually inaccurate, but also seems entirely fabricated. Concerning ethnicity, Jews are categorized as Caucasians affording them privileges associated with whiteness within American society. The US Constitution of 1787 acknowledged the dehumanization of enslaved individuals, defining them as three-fifths of a person. In contrast, the Naturalization Act of 1790 designated Jews as free white persons, thereby qualifying them for citizenship. The United States was one of the first countries in the history of the world where Jews received equal rights. George Washington embraced Jews as citizens, and over the next centuries, prominent Jews earned a place in every field of American success. African Americans were forcibly brought to America, where for 250 years, they were treated as property for labor, bought and sold resulting in widespread physical and psychological abuse. Families were frequently separated through buying and selling, causing disruptions to familial and cultural bonds. Enslaved individuals were denied education and had limited access to cultural and religious practices. When Jews began to have some right after the civil right movement, their song, poems, films, and drama became forward-looking. They strategized on global conquest and creating economic power. Arby's claims that Jews, acting collectively, engaged in strategic planning for global conquest and the pursuit of economic power, should be unequivocally condemned. This statement is steeped in Nazi-era anti-Semitism, the very ideas that led to the Holocaust and the tragic death of six million Jews. In contrast, the blacks often dwell on historical grievances, lamenting, 
Yesterday, we were beaten, killed, and so on. The new current generation lives in the past. But the Jews made their people think about the future. In a span of less than 50 years, Jews accumulate considerable wealth and power. While blacks, they got their freedom. They remain to be poor. They can sing, but cannot get out of poverty. The history of African Americans in the United States is marked by 250 years of enslavement, during which they were bought and sold, receiving no compensation for a lifetime of forced labor. Emancipation did not immediately alleviate their struggles, as a subsequent century of economic, social and political segregation persisted through Jim Crow laws. These laws further marginalized African Americans, denying them various opportunities, including the right to vote. Although civil rights laws were a significant step, they did not erase the chronic effects of segregation, leaving a lasting legacy that continues to impact social and economic opportunities, affecting housing, schools and neighbourhoods. The creation of the American middle class, facilitated by the GI Bill, became elusive for many African Americans due to systemic racism. Despite the promise of educational, training and home ownership opportunities, discrimination hindered their access to these benefits. The racial wealth gap endured as discriminatory lending practices like redlining impeded their ability to secure low-cost mortgages. African-American veterans, despite contributing to social security, faced lower benefits due to employment discrimination and wage disparities. Recognizing these historical injustices is crucial for addressing contemporary disparities and promoting policies to counter systemic racism, fostering greater equity in education, home ownership and economic opportunities. This person, who openly directs insults and contempt toward African Americans, epitomizes a troubling record of engaging in hate speech and academic misconduct, having been revealed for plagiarizing his doctoral degree. Despite having the chance for a legitimate education, he opted for fraudulent activities, revealing a startling absence of integrity. How do you go from winning a Nobel Peace Prize to being accused of horrific war crimes in just two years? That's the situation facing Ethiopian Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed. Abi stands accused of being a war criminal, accused of violating international humanitarian law. The charges against him encompass deliberate civilian fatalities, rape and torture. Well, Facebook has now removed a post from the country's prime minister for violating its policies against inciting violence. On Sunday, Mr. Abi Ahmed called on citizens to take up arms. To Abi Ahmed's speech could provide the world with a glimpse into his mindset. It is essential to clarify that this individual bears direct responsibility for the loss of millions of Ethiopian lives over the last five years and has also been accused of war crimes by the international community. Justice may catch up with him when the appropriate time arrives. <laughs>